Hi everyone, welcome to today's lesson. Um, we're going to be doing a little bit on portraits today, um, looking specifically at noses. So sort of like an anatomical um, uh, aspect of portraiture lesson. Um, so we're going to be looking at the major structures of the nose and then how to go about rendering it um, and what we're going to look for when we're rendering a nose, kind of like important aspects to nail down. Because um, there's a lot of kind of, not exactly misconceptions, but things that people get kind of caught up on when they're drawing noses that you not ne don't necessarily need to fuss too much about. Um, so we'll be looking at the kind of practical approach to drawing noses and also the, um, the planal structures that make up a nose. So, um, bearing that in mind, we're going to start just by looking at the planes that make up, um, so I'm just going to check which pencil I've got here, that's the wrong one. Look at the planes that make up the brow and the nose generally. So I'm going to use a fairly um, heavy pencil here. So initially, if we think of our brow line, um, we usually have a plane that dips down on either side of the eye sockets. Um, and that meets the kind of top of the bridge of the nose. So it kind of, it dips back. So viewed in, in um, profile, this plane would look something like this. And then this is the brow. So we'll work kind of in profile next to next to the front view of the nose. So we can kind of think of the structures as it was rotating around. So if you imagine this is a face we're looking at front on, and this is a, uh, a face in profile. So <clears throat> what happens next, we'll start actually in profile because it makes a bit more sense. Obviously the bridge of the nose thrusts out, outwards from the face. So you know in profile the nose always kind of sticks out fairly obviously. So we've got our, our nose jutting out in a kind of triangular fashion there. If we're then thinking of that front on, keeping at the same height so that we're kind of drawing the same nose, we then know that the bridge of the nose, it varies in shape, but if we're keeping it really simple, the nose is pretty much a flat panel, that front section becomes a flat panel. Now typically, and it varies a bit from person to person, but the nose will kind of have a bit of a slope back down to our, uh, where it meets the top of the, kind of top of the lip, I suppose, top of the top lip. Um, and then if we look at that here, can imagine that plane is kind of jutting back in this sort of fashion. So then if we kind of think of it, I'm going to draw it slightly, slightly out of profile. So you can imagine this plane. So that's, this is the front plane. Then this is that dipping back plane. And on either side of that, we then have the nostrils that thrust out. Now, obviously the nostrils have a bit more of a specific shape than this, we're really simplifying it. Um, but it's useful to think of the general shapes of the nose pretty simply, because if you get too caught up with the specifics of the nostril shapes, um, it can get a bit kind of like fiddly and the nose will typically work better if we work in a more general sense. We'll, we'll look at that a bit more when we're looking at the, the shadows, typical shadows and forms that the nose will make. So at the top of the nose, we then have the side planes, the sides of the nose, which kind of slope backwards from the front plane. And they're going to be identical on either side. <coughs> then we've got this side as well, which kind of can triangulate a bit like that one. And then dropping down like this. And then with your eyes, your eyes might sit somewhere here, um, but you'll have the the brow kind of dropping back. Um, and obviously how far the brow drops back will vary from person to person, but we're just going to make it arbitrarily drop back about this far. 
So that's our bra dropping back in. See so if you look here, you can see what's happening on this side. So that pretty much makes up the forms of the nose. So if we go about um, sort of shading this in, um, say from a typical um, a light that, let's say it's coming from the top right corner um, to make it a bit more complex. So if we're thinking about the planes, we know that these planes are dipping right back in, so they're going to be pretty dark. The divot here will be dark as well, maybe not quite as dark. The light's coming from the right-hand side, so again, this side of the nose is going to be pretty dark, but probably not quite as dark as the brow and the underside of the nose. The underside of the nose is going to be dark. Front plane is going to be fairly well lit, but probably not quite as well lit as this side plane. And then these planes of the cheek would likely be somewhat lit somewhat like that. So you can see already the nose is starting to develop a fairly clear form, um, which is what we're after. So let's see if we do, let me think. Let's say that the light's going to come in from in front of this side. Again, this is going to be somewhat shaded because it's above. The bottom of the nose is going to be shaded. That's going to be kind of dark. And then the side plane is going to be somewhat shaded. And this is going to shade in as well. So you can see again those forms starting to emerge. <clears throat> now, what we want to look for, we're going to look at this a bit more with noses. If we had a nose like this, it's going to be casting a shape on the front of the face. So the shape will be something like this maybe. So that all connects together. We've got this cast shadow. And what that means is the shape that we're looking for when we're drawing in our shadow shapes and a typically kind of lit portrait will usually connect to the, the brow and connect to the side of the nose. It becomes something like this. So you can see that kind of makes the nose feel like it's thrusting out. If we're doing the same thing on this side, we'd have a cast shadow, something like this, on the lip and below. Um, just to put it sort of into context. So that's it for the really simple forms of the nose. Um, from this, we have to then build up something a bit more complex. So we have to bear in mind that out of this bottom section, we're going to have um, the nostrils flaring out. So if we were to draw a similar sort of uh, face, so we start again the same way on both sides. Just draw my brow in first. Very often you'll have um, a sort of bulging out and then a tapering in. So if we add an extra form, and all of these sorts of uh, variations that I'm going through, um, do alter from person to person. So this is just a kind of specific type of nose that I'm picking. But mainly what we want to look for are how these nostril forms can start to block out So you can see it's starting to give a bit more specific shape and some of those important forms of the nose are becoming more apparent if we do this. Still need our side planes. 
can be a little bit more complex this time. Connecting to that nose. We also want to think about where the nostrils fit into this. So once we block in the nostrils, you can see that nose becomes a lot more realistic. So we put it on this side as well. So if we shade that in and then darken our nostril to a little bit darker, same here. Darken our nostrils. You can see that starts to be a lot more realistic as a nose. And then obviously going to light it in a similar way to the last one. Starts to build out pretty well as a nose. So that pretty much gives you a, a decent overview of thinking about the forms of a nose. So as I say, this can vary a lot. So you could have kind of noses that are a lot more sort of pixie-like. You can have noses that are a lot more um, kind of severe, almost like Roman noses versus more of an aquiline Greek nose. Um, in, a, in a classical sense, a Greek nose or a Roman nose tends to be used for, for sculpture. Um, or you get kind of button noses, so you get all sorts of different variations, but generally these are the sort of structures you're looking for. Um, and the main thing, as I say, is we want to think about what kind of shadow is being cast by the bottom of the nose because that's something that we can pretty early early on latch on to um, and it gives a pretty specific specific shape to the nose so you can almost get away if you were drawing a nose um, so you can do an example below um, something a bit more specific If we were to draw in <coughs> an eyebrow shape, Let's shade that in. So we're lighting it kind of more from the top left. Got some shadow shapes um, we can plot in on this side. That connects to the shadow kind of underneath the nose. So we've got the shadow of the bottom of the nose and the shadow it's casting. If we combine those together and we've got our, our brow shadow plotted in and then if we plot in the opposing brow shadow. <coughs> Say it's something like this. You can see already that nose is starting to emerge pretty specifically as a nose. <clears throat> um, I'll actually, um, when I make the video, I'll pop up this reference I'm using um, so you get a better idea. So if we, I'm going to do actually, finally, working with this, I'm going to zoom in. So you can see how I've kind of plotted the basic forms that we've developed here into this one. Um, I'm just going to drop down my my camera, I'm going to turn it off and reset it just a bit closer in as we render this nose. <clears throat> so that should be reasonably sharp. I'm going to swap to a, a kind of finer pencil now. So working with this reference, everything's reasonably well plotted in from that kind of quick block in that I did. So we can spend a little bit of time making sure the 
bottom of this nose is reasonably accurate. Now something I recommend doing when you're working with noses, even though you can keep these forms in mind, um, don't necessarily combine these light shapes. So on this light hand light side, which is on the left side of the face as we look at it, we can allow the nose to just kind of immediately or kind of initially just merge into the light shape and we're going to develop it a little bit more in, in a moment. So initially I'm just going to make this shape a bit more specific kind of even out the shading slightly. So we've got this nostril down here So once I put that in and I separate it out from the reflected light under the nose, <clears throat> it gives that reflected light a little bit more form. So I'm going to pop in the kind of counter nostril, the opposite nostril, just over here, just similar to what we did up there, we're just being a bit more specific with this one. bug line now so just that that line where it gets a little bit darker just as it's about to meet the the light shape in the nose so you can also start to look for this bottom of the center of the nose kind of wrapping up um, a little bit of a bed bug line on this side as well that's looking pretty good So we can work down these sort of almost shadow half tones on this side of the nose. So you can see I've so far I've not touched um, the light shape at all. I'm just working in the shadows and primarily just working with So for this one, I'm not gonna not gonna worry about the the eyes at all. I'm just thinking about the forms of the nose. So we've got the shadow down here. This is our cast shadow, we're developing a bit, dropping down there. So most of the forms in the darker half tones and the shadows are now developed. They're looking pretty good. Put a little bit of a shadow up there. So you can see already, I've not done any half tones on this side, um, it's starting to to have a nice kind of amount of form, it's projecting well. So from there we can put in our central kind of brow shape. So in the reference you can see it gets a little bit darker just there. And then we've got a bit of a transition out.
Then we can look for where it's softer or sharper emerging out from this right hand shadow shape of the nose. left hand side so that nostril kind of connects up goes a little bit darker here and then we've got slightly darker edge to the bridge of that nose going up here and then if we leave we're going to leave a little highlight separate so I'm going to block that out now and just add a general tone because the face is lit from the left just the center of the, the nose like we did there is going to be have a little bit of a general tone kind of going from left to right and but we're, as I say we're leaving this highlight so I can make it a bit darker around the highlight but I'm not going to darken that in at all There we have that, that nose pretty nicely rendered out. So you can see going from these basic forms, thinking about them as I'm working, just gives a bit of direction. <clears throat> so that's what we're always after whenever we're kind of using these sorts of constructions. Um, they're obviously super simple up here, but they start to make a lot more sense of a more rendered um, image like this nose. So I'm gonna shift my focus is good. So we'll just focus in on that and to give you guys a good look. So yeah, that's pretty much it um, for this little nose video. So next week we'll probably look at a different um, a different facial feature, uh, maybe the mouth. Do the same thing. So we're looking at the basic structures and then how you can turn that into a more, <coughs> more rendered aspect of a drawing. Well, I hope that was interesting. Um, as always, follow us on YouTube. And if you follow the, follow the link um, below, you can go to OCAD um, and have a look at the, the Art Studio course um, where you can get support from myself and other tutors uh, with your own work and working from these tutorials. Um, but yeah, that's it. I'll see you guys soon.